who created the 1860s Banting Diet for Weight Loss. Here's a picture of Mr. Banting and here is his story. William Banting, who was a uh, casket maker in London, wrote a booklet called Letter on Copulence, addressed to the public in 1860 after losing 45 pounds. His doctor put him on a diet of avoiding starch and sugar. The Banting diet is a program where you eat meat, fish, and poultry. This was way before industrialized foods, no less. What Mr. Banting created in 1860 is today's modern low-carb diet. And here's a copy of the cover of the book, and if you search it, on Google, you might be able to get a free copy for yourself. In reality, all he did was to go back to a diet that helped our ancestors, Homo sapiens, survive evolution to become modern humans. It was the transformation of the naked apes diet from vegetarian to meat eater that increased the size of the human brain and physique. The human body digestive system is similar to all carnivores. Unlike cows and other herbivores who have two stomachs to digest grass and other plant matter, while our digestive tract is made for meat. If you look at this diagram on the right there, you see the stomach of a carnivore uh, and the stomach and intestinal system and digestive system of a herbivore. They have a larger intestinal tract to digest grasses and wheat and things like that. That's why the vegetarian diet is not necessarily such a good idea. And don't forget, as, I, as this fellow wrote in 1967, the book called The Naked Ape, we are naked apes. A lot of people try to think that we don't go to the bathroom, we don't have sex, we don't urinate, women don't have menstrual cycles. We, we live in this facade that we're not animals, but we are animals. And the only way that we survive to be here today over the millennia is by eating meat. Wheat was not introduced into the human diet until around 10,000 years ago. The food industry's version of modern wheat and grain with industrial bread and industrial grain consumption plays a large role in today's health crisis. Look at this picture on the side. Hamburger, pizza, french fries, uh, fried chicken, hot dogs, the human diet has changed even more dramatically over the last hundred years. And in those changes, and it is those changes that have made you and me obese. The food industry in league with government has caused many of our modern diseases like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, and bad cholesterol. Thanks to the food industry, we have to deal with trans fat, also known as partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. Hydrogenation is a process of adding H2 gas under high pressure to liquid oils to turn into solids at room temperature. Found in deep fried, fast foods, pastries, crackers, butter, uh, not butter, margarine. That's a misquote there. It's not butter, margarine, because butter does not have trans fats. This is the reason to avoid them. Fried chicken, deep fried chicken, uh, crackers, cookies, cake, trans fats cause long-term inflammation, insulin resistance, type 2 diabetes, and risks, uh, diabetes risk and obesity. You know, a lot of times we, we don't understand what we're doing to ourselves. We really don't. We eat crackers. I used to have two, three cookies after dinner every night for years. And I couldn't understand why I was gaining weight. Refined wheat. Corn, sugar, trans fats, and other processed foods have been introduced to our modern diet over the reason, recent modern is are the reason modern man is suffering an obesity epidemic. Our obesity has nothing to do with willpower or laziness, and all to do with our modern diet of wheat, corn, sugar, high fructose corn syrup, and baked goods. Here's a picture of a wonderful movie that I recommend to everybody. It's a documentary where a man went out around the world researching the perfect human diet. And in here, he explains why we should be carnivores, why fat and meat should be a part, a major part of your diet, and carbohydrates should be a minimal part of your, carbo of your diet. 
what you can do starting today. First thing, start eating meat. If you can find organic or grass-fed, even better. Increase fats in your diet. Yeah, fats. Because they have discovered that saturated fat and monounsaturated fats are not bad for you. You know, the, the food pyramid that we've been led to believe was so wonderful, turns out it's not. Eat vegetables and low glycemic fruits. You know, avoid the fruits that have a lot of sugar in them. Avoid processed, refined foods and baked goods. Eat only whole foods. You know, a f whole food is something that is completely packaged in one item like an apple or a steak, a whole food. And of course, drink plenty of water because you have to flush this fat out of your body. You know, how this program works is that your body is not taking in carbohydrates from the outside. So what it starts to do is burn the carbohydrates that has been packing onto your belly for years. And you'll be amazed how this starts to move and how you're not hungry because fat ha uh, does what is called satiety. It fills you up and you feel full so you're not so hungry. As the young ladies doing to those baked goods say no. Just like you would say no in modern days to no smoking compared to the smoking was rampant in the 60s, people now say no to smoking. And I think in the future, people are gonna say no to carbohydrates. Three foods to avoid for preventing daily fatigue. Processed foods, pizza, hot dogs, burgers, french fries, refined carbohydrates, donuts, cupcakes, cookies, bread, especially bread. I love my bread, but I've eaten enough to last me a lifetime. I don't need it anymore. Preservatives and additives are added to all our food. Potato chips is the worst criminal of all. You know, it's not the potato itself, it's the oils that it's processed in that is causing all the harm.